So today's film noir was a 1954 Fox film that I rented from Videodrome. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's called Black Widow, not to be confused with the Bob Raffleson 1987 film of the same name, which I watched last year. This was uh, written and directed and produced by Nunnally Johnson, and it's based on a novel by Patrick Quinton. Nunnally Johnson uh, only directed eight films, but he wrote like 50 films, including How to Marry a Millionaire. This film was made with Fox right after the production of How to Marry a Millionaire in Cinemascope and kind of looks like How to Marry a Millionaire if it were a Technicolor noir. Um, it has a large ensemble cast, not a large ensemble cast, but a ensemble cast of Ginger Rogers, Van Heflin, Jean Tierney, George Raft, and the Black Widow herself, Peggy Ann Garner. You'll remember Peggy Ann Garner as the little girl from Jane Eyre and um, Orson Welles' version and uh, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Um, also featured in the cast are Virginia Leith, who you might know as Jan in the Pan from The Brain That Wouldn't Die, a film that I dearly love and think is uh, wrongly often made fun of thanks to Mr. Science Theater 3000, and Hilda Sims, who originated the role of Anna LaCosta on Broadway. Uh, the plot has nothing to do with Widows. I'm not really sure why the name is called Black Widow. Um, it plays sort of like a noirish ish B-murder version of All About Eve, if you will. Van Heflin is a Broadway producer. His wife is played by Jean Tierney. She has gone to Los Angeles to visit her mother, who is ill, um, Heflin has to go to the party of an actress who's the lead role in his current show. She lives downstairs. She's played by Ginger Rogers. She is married to a kept man, Reginald Gardner, who doesn't quite enjoy being a kept man. While at this party that he doesn't really want to go to, out on the fire escape, he meets um, the innocent Peggy Ann Garner, who is a 20-year-old aspiring writer who has just moved there from Savannah. In a series of flashbacks, you discover that there's more to uh, Nancy, Piggy, Ann Garner's uh, story than she's told Van Heflin. She convinces him to, to let him to let her use his um, apartment for writing while his wife is away. When he goes to pick her up at the uh, to pick Jean Tierney up at the airport, and they come home, they discover she is what dead. Not only dead hanging. At which point George Raff enters the story and tries to figure out who murdered her and obviously everyone thinks it's Van Heflin because everyone thinks Van Heflin and her were having an affair. You also discover, and they use this word, that she was pregnant. Therefore, um, it's okay that she died because she was a loose woman, right? Uh, and then you, as you go through the rest of the film, you discover, you know, what, what her sordid life really was and why she was murdered and um, who murdered her. I gotta say who, don't wanna spoil the plot. Uh, what I will say is that I think Ginger Rogers is quite good in this film, in this role. She plays the grand dame, aging, um, super celebrity Broadway star. Uh, Van Heflin does the best he can. Jean Tierney, this is towards the end of her career, and she's gorgeous. Um, and there are a few moments where you can see the fleeting um, prowess that she had as an actress, but she doesn't isn't given really a lot to do. George Raft is serviceable. Um, really, Virginia Leigh gives one of the best performances in the film because she feels like a real person, as does Leslie Quinn. Um, it feels like the rest of the characters off and on. Um, oh, Otto Kruger, also in this film, he's quite good, as the aging Greenwich Village uh, actor uncle of Peggy Ann Garner. So um, this has beautiful black and white I mean, beautiful Technicolor filmography, or filmography, cinematography. Um, it was edited by Dorothy Spencer. She's done a lot of great films. You should look her up. Uh, I wish it was better than it was. Uh, it's definitely a film that makes me feel like it hates women. It hates every single version of the women in this film. In, in that it has women behave in ways that I feel... Um, 
are not great and um, are judged as ways in which women would behave. Um, but the terrible things the men do aren't judged in the same way, and I think that's unfair. I also um, think that it it um, trades in stereotypes of women that are dangerous and awful and generally perpetrated or not perpetrated um, perpetuated by men. So there's that. Um, which again, the only women in this film that actually feel like real women are the uh, Greenwich Village artist played by Virginia Leith and the um, restaurant owner played by Mabel, I mean by Hilda Sims. They feel like real people. All of the lead characters feel like stereotypes, tried, tired, awful stereotypes of women. So if, you, if you're looking for that, this is the movie for you. Um, I will, however, recommend this DVD. It has um, commentary by Alan K. Rohde, which I did not listen to because I didn't want to watch the movie again, um, and two really good documentaries, one on um, Ginger Rogers and one on Gene Tierney. And then in the Gene Tierney one, you have uh, Robert Osborne, Foster Hirsch, uh, somebody I can't remember, um, Eddie Muller and Alan K. Rohde all talking about her. And in the Ginger Rogers one, they have Ginger Rogers' assistant talking. So you, you get to learn a lot about the, the women, um, which is great. So at the very least, I recommend rec do, um, renting the DVD so you can get those special features. And now I wonder if the other one I rented, um, the other Fox DVD that I rented last week, I wonder if that had special features and I didn't look at it. Dang it. <sighs> Anyways, I, I liked the special features on this DVD. I didn't particularly care for the film. Um, there's... So many other Van Heflin, Ginger Rogers, Gene Tierney, uh, George Rock Noirs that I'd rather watch. Let's put it that way. Happy November.